Howdy folks, in this video I'm going to show you how to set up the co-pilot autopilot on the ZOHD Drift using the Flysky FSI6 radio. I'll show you the results first and then we'll go over how to actually achieve it. Now we have the mode channel 5 set to switch C. Switch C up, it's in return to home mode, we've got a flashing green light on the co-pilot. Position 2 in the middle is manual mode no light on. Position three is stabilized mode, a solid green light. Now this confuses a lot of people when they first set up their drift because with the switch in its default position it's in return to home mode and you can't do any programming or setup in return to home mode so that's what catches a lot of people out. Flashing green light it's in return to home. You either need to be in manual mode or stabilized mode so look for no green light or a solid green light. I also have a dual rate switch set up on switch A and that's because in manual mode you have enormous throws on the drift, too much probably, you need to cut that down to like 50% plus maybe 30% expo. So my idea is uh, you need all the throws you can get in stabilised mode because it's, it's kind of uh, lacking in control I suppose. So when you switch to manual mode you also switch uh, to your lower rate and that will give you much better range of control basically. So full rate when you're in stabilized mode, half rate when you're in manual mode. That's, what, that's the way I like to fly it. You can also see that there's a solid red light and there's no beeping. That means the GPS has acquired enough satellites which is amazing because I'm inside a metal shed at the moment. It will keep flashing and beeping and, until it acquires enough satellites, so uh, you may never achieve that inside where you are. In return to home mode, you'll see the ailerons twitching and carrying on. That's a good sign that you're in return to home mode. Manual mode, it's still, and you can throttle up. In stabilised mode and return to home mode, you won't be able to throttle up until you have enough, enough satellites. The receiver I'm using is the FS IA6 which is just a pure PWM receiver, 6 channel, perfect for our needs. We'll use the supplied PWM cable which is the one with the 4 pin and the 3 pin servo plug on the other end. The 4 pin plug connects along the signal pins uh, and the white is on channel 1 so we just connect that into channels 1, 2, 3, 4 along the top. The other plug is the auxiliary channel 5 or the modes. So we'll plug that into channel 5 with, with the white wire up the top on the signal. So that's connected now. All we have to do is connect that into uh, the PWM socket on the co-pilot. So I'll just thread that through from underneath because my receiver is going to go underneath. So there we go. There's the other end of the PWM cable and that just plugs into the PWM socket. Just make sure you get that the correct way around and the white wire goes towards the front. So that's plugged in there now. So now plugging the drift into the co-pilot we have the GPS plugged into the GPS socket there uh, and we'll plug the setup pad into the settings there, aileron into channel 1, elevator into channel 2, throttle or ESC into channel 3. Alright so how to set up the model now. First of all select which model you want, give it a name, type is aeroplane or glider, standard model it is. Uh, that's all we need to do there, cancel out of that. First thing we need to do is assign a switch to channel 5 uh, and I've chosen uh, switch C, this one here. We don't need anything on channel 6. Cancel out of that. Uh, set up your dual rates. And I've got 100% rate and zero expo in the normal position, which is up. And 50% and minus 30 expo in the sport position. I know that the terms are reversed, but that's the way I like to, to use it really. Full rate up, half rate down. Do the same for the elevator channel as well, channel 2. 
So let's just check the display now. Aileron channel 1, elevator channel 2, throttle channel 3, and rudder channel 4. And we actually do need the rudder channel for some things. Now if you want to reverse the operation of the C switch, you can reverse channel 5, so that, that means stabilise will be up the top, manual in the middle, and return to home down the bottom, which is probably a better way to do it. So let's do that. Channel 5, reverse, cancel, hold, cancel to save that. Look at display, now we've reversed the position of those switches. So I would recommend doing that. That would give you stabilised mode in the top, manual in the middle, return to home down the bottom. That's a more logical way to have it. Now something else we have to do is set up the fail safe so that it'll return to home if you lose signal. So for that we go down to receiver setup, fail safe, turn on fail safe for channel 5, put switch C or channel 5 into the return to home position and then cancel out of that. Make sure you have a minus 100 showing there and then we're good and we don't set any of the other channels we don't set aileron elevator or specially throttle we leave throttle off co-pilot will take control of the throttle in a return in a uh, fail safe situation so we don't set that at all and just go back in and check that that is set at minus 100. now you can check that that's going to work by actually turning the radio off while the model is still powered up and you'll see the ailerons wiggling as if it's in return to home mode. I'd hang on to it just in case the, the throttle fires up, uh, but that's working properly. So that means if you lose signal or something like that, flies beyond range, it'll go into return to home mode. Now we need to get the control surfaces moving in the correct direction and the direction of stabilization working in the correct direction as well. So twiddle your sticks, uh, you may need to reverse a channel in your transmitter. I found I had to reverse channel 2, the elevator, to get that working in the correct direction. So uh, you'll probably have to do that too. And then you need to check the direction of stabilisation. And basically, whichever part of the plane you lift up, that control surface should come up to meet you. So if you lift the left wing up, the left aileron should come up. If you lift the tail up, the elevator should come up so that it counteracts that movement and stabilizes the, the model. To change the direction of the stabilization, you need to plug in the little uh, settings pad and get your little screwdriver and uh, rotate that pot either side of the uh, 12 o'clock position. Uh, and that also changes the amount of stabilization too. And uh, you usually need just a little bit of stabilization. So straight up and down is nothing uh, a little bit to the left is stabilised one way, a little bit to the right is stabilised the other way. You just have to work out on the model uh, what works in the correct direction. If you find when you're flying in manual mode you need to do some trims on the radio, then you need to tell the flight control board uh, where those trims are set or sort of calibrate the radio to the flight control board. And to do that you need to connect your little pad, push and hold the set button. I think it's for five seconds. Let go, ailerons will do a wiggle like that, and it's reset. You also change the type of model you're setting up on by the set button, and you, there's three different choices. There's the T-tail, which is the drift, which is just the uh, LED number two on. Then there's the V-tail with just LED one on, and then there's the uh, flying wing or elevons with both LEDs on. But we just want LED two on, so there we go. Now the plane does a level calibration when you first start up. That's uh, why it waits for a little while, then does the, the little sounds. Uh, if you want to redo that level calibration because the, uh, it won't fly level in stabilised mode, then you put it in stabilised mode, put the sticks down and in like that until you get some flashing lights. There we go. Flashing lights, let go. Flashing stops and then cycle the power. And we're good to go. 
All of this stuff is covered in the manual, so make sure you download them, print them out. Uh, the different LED flashing tells you here, the, the different uh, plane types over here. The way the stabilisation should work is uh, on this section here and explains all about the uh, stabilisation direction as well there. So there we go, that should be enough to get you set up and flying with your drift and your FlySky radio. Great system, works really well once you get it set up. Just a few little things that can catch you out. So go and have some fun. Thanks for watching.